Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here's a rather interesting product, a handheld spectrum analyzer. Now let me first show you what's in the box and then we'll go into more details about this device. So first off, there is a pretty well written user's manual. However, there are some features covered in the manual which are not available on the actual device, like a signal generator, for example. Taking the other items out of the box, it seems apparent that the included telescopic antenna is actually quite good quality. Well, at least compared to other small telescopic antennas that I've seen in the past. Now looking at the analyzer itself, we have seven push buttons on that front panel, just below the backlit LCD. Navigation through the menus and settings is pretty easy, as each button has been laid out in an easy to use format. Now at the bottom of the unit, there's a USB-C socket, which is used to charge the internal battery. And on top of the unit, there are two SMA sockets and a power on and off switch. Now let's just take a moment to overview the specifications and specifics of this handheld spectrum analyzer. Now there appears to be two models available when you order this device. One has a single antenna port and the other has two antenna ports like the one I'm showing in this video. The antenna port on the left supports a frequency range of between 240 megahertz up to 960 megahertz, while the antenna port on the right supports a frequency range of between 15 megahertz right up to 2.7 gigahertz. Now, if you're looking at this product and thinking it looks familiar, then you may have seen another product called the RF Explorer, which has similar specifications but costs a lot more money if it had the same range as this analyzer. In fact, as far as I can tell, without owning an RF Explorer, the user interface is pretty much identical. Now, the manual does have references to a software program which can edit the device's presets, but as of yet, I've not found it online. What's even more strange is that when the device is plugged into a computer, it does not show up as a USB device or even a virtual COM port which kind of leads me to think that the USB-C is purely for charging. Now there is a way to put it into a firmware download mode, but even when in a firmware download mode and connected to the computer, a virtual COM port still does not show. So if you guys have got one of these and you've experienced the same, then please drop a comment down below. So let's take a look through the menu and then see what this unit can do. Now after pressing the menu button, you'll be presented with this screen using the up and down arrow buttons and then the center button to enter that menu. The about screen shows the firmware version and even the date of the firmware. Now according to the products listing, there is lifetime firmware updates, but as mentioned earlier, I cannot seem to locate anywhere online where to download the firmware. The battery selection shows the current level of charge for the internal battery. And what's interesting here is that you actually have to have the unit switched on for the battery to charge from that USB-C port. The RF connections page shows clearly which port is active along with the frequency range for each of the ports. Changing the active port is done elsewhere in the menu. If I now attach the included antenna and then select the Wi-Fi analyzer feature, you'll notice that the analyzer shows a nice little bar graph for all of the Wi-Fi channels on the 2.4 gigahertz band. Now I guess this can be a really useful tool when you're setting up a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi system and you want to make sure that your Wi-Fi access point won't clash with others on the same frequency. Now this would make a great tool for anyone who needs to perform a site survey. It's just a shame it doesn't also cover the 5.8 gigahertz band too. The Spectrum Analyzer page is exactly what it says on the tin. It shows a graphical representation of what radio signals are being received within the set parameters. Pressing the menu button again allows you to enter into the Spectrum Analyzer settings so you can change the center frequency, the frequency span, and which antenna module to use. You can use the arrow buttons to change the values in each of those settings. You can even use this handy device as a spectrum analyzer to test nearby radios. Just make sure not to overload the receiver input, otherwise you'll get some kind of weird readings. 
specifications and what the maximum input values can be found in the manual. Other options are available within the menu system so you can change features like attenuator, DSP mode, backlight settings and even the contrast. Now back to the spectrum analyzer and this shows quite a bit of information while it's scanning the set frequency span. Now here we're looking at the FM broadcast band and notice how it displays a little arrow above the highest peak. All the other peaks are actually FM broadcast radio stations live at time of recording. If I adjust the frequency to around 800 MHz, we can clearly see some well-defined signals. Now these are in fact transmissions from nearby mobile phone cell towers, which is quite interesting to visualize on a device like this. Now there are lots of other little settings that can be changed, like whether or not the inbuilt filter is activated, or even turning on and off the peak hold feature. I guess something like this could also be used to track down local QRM or interference. Now if you know the frequency, or at least the rough frequency, then you could use this handheld device to track down those unwanted signals that are interfering with your ham radio experience. Now, if you guys have got one of these or even the RF Explorer or a different make or model altogether, let me know what you use it for. Remember, I'm only really interested in knowing about these portable ones, not the ones that sit on your desk at home that are the size of a bus. Now, as always, I'll leave a link down in the description below of where you can buy this from or even if you just want to check out further information on this product. I hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one, stay safe, take care and I'll see you in the next one.